We live in an era of remarkable technological advancements. The devices in our pockets connect us to the world, but also to systems that track, analyze, and often exploit our personal information. Today, we delve into the history and implications of this reality. You know, Barack, it's like the military, right? They track everything, movements, locations. It's impressive tech, really doing a great job out there. Yeah, and speaking of tracking Donald, I bet they would have had a hard time tracking you during the draft, huh? Indeed, Joe. But let's step back and look at the broader picture. Privacy isn't just a personal concern. It's a fundamental human right, recognized and declared by the United Nations. It ensures our freedom of expression, protects against unjust discrimination, and safeguards our dignity. Sounds a bit dramatic, Obama. But all right, I'll bite. People do like their secrets. Keeps things interesting. So let's take a closer look at how privacy rights have emerged, been challenged, and transformed over the years. From wartime measures to the digital age's data rush, Understanding this evolution will help us navigate the complexities of privacy in today's world and prepare for what's coming next. As we move deeper into our discussion, let's begin by examining Project Shamrock, one of the earliest large-scale surveillance programs. Initiated in the 1940s, it allowed the U.S. government to intercept all telegraphic data entering or exiting the United States. This was privacy's first major compromise in the name of national security. Big moves, Obama catching bad guys, reading all those telegrams like something out of a spy movie? Sure, Donald, but it wasn't all about catching bad guys. It set a precedent. Things got out of hand with COINTELPRO, where surveillance was used against political activists right here at home, often without justification. Exactly, Joe. COINTELPRO, or the Counterintelligence Program, was an FBI initiative aimed at surveilling, infiltrating, discrediting, and disrupting domestic political organizations. The lack of oversight and unchecked power highlighted the dangers of such surveillance. Look, they were after some bad hombres, some real troublemakers. Sometimes you have to push the envelope to keep America safe. You can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs, right? I agree with your sentiment, Donald. In fact, COINTELPRO was used to keep tabs on the Ku Klux Klan back then. But it was also used to monitor civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King Jr., along with environmentalists and women's rights activists. I mean, what can you do? With you and Sleepy Joe in charge, we're just waiting to be hit again. Look at 9-11. Sometimes the ends justify the means. We need to be tough to stop the bad guys before they can do real harm. True, Donald. The tragic events of September 11th significantly transformed global security policies, including here in the U.S. It led to the enactment of the USA Patriot Act, Act and modifications to the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or FISA, which expanded the scope of lawful surveillance. It was a tough time. We needed to protect the nation, but also face the challenge of preserving our civil liberties. Amidst these expanded powers, Edward Snowden's revelations in 2013 shook the world. He exposed the extent of global surveillance programs, including PRISM, which forced major U.S. tech companies to offer up their data. Snowden, huh? If he could reveal Obama's birth records, I might become a major fan. But seriously, he showed us just how deep the rabbit hole goes. Let's focus on one particular system Edward Snowden disclosed, X-Keyscore. It's described as one of the most powerful tools of mass surveillance. Imagine a search engine so powerful that it could access every email, every text, every phone call, and track any individual's location globally. That's terrifying to think about. And it's not just X Keyscore. Programs like Bull Run, which developed new algorithms to decrypt encrypted data, and Muscular, which intercepted data between tech giants like Google and Yahoo, represent the breadth of surveillance capabilities. And let's not forget Lovin' folks. That's where NSA employees use these surveillance tools to spy on their crushes. Talk about perks of the job. While those might seem lighter notes, Donald, they underscore a serious breach of ethical standards. Other programs like Turbine automated the deployment of malware, taking control over vast networks of computers worldwide. It's a lot to take in. These tools have changed what privacy means in our world today. Indeed, Joe. And as we continue, we'll explore how the commercialization of data collection and the rise of artificial intelligence could further complicate our privacy rights. As we transition from the roots of governmental surveillance, let's explore how privacy concerns have expanded into the commercial realm. The modern online economy thrives on a fundamental concept, targeted advertising. This method fundamentally challenges our notion of privacy. You know, it's all about the art of the deal, Obama. Get the users hooked, collect their data, and bingo. Money starts rolling in, it's business. Precisely, Donald, but at what cost? Google pioneered what's commonly referred to as the advertising model. First, attract as many users as possible without immediate concern for profitability. And then they collect heaps of data on every one of those users. I mean, everything from what you're searching for to the videos you watch. That's step two, Joe. With this vast amount of data, they move to step three. Monetize it by displaying ads specifically targeted to users' demographics and interests. And then step four, profit. It's brilliant, really. But remember the old saying, if you aren't paying for the product, you are the product. 
this model doesn't just sell ads, it sells user privacy. And it's not just Google. Look at Amazon. They file patents that let Alexa send background audio to the cloud, even when no one's actively using it. That's a whole new level of invasion. You mean they listen to everything? You mean everything? I need to make a call. And here's where it connects back to surveillance. Programs like PRISM piggyback on the data collection efforts of these tech giants. Since companies are already incentivized to gather as much data as possible to sell ads, surveillance agencies find a treasure trove ready and waiting. It's like they don't even have to do the dirty work anymore. The tech companies collect all the intel, and the government just taps into it. Exactly, and consider this. We've all had the uncanny experience of browsing through certain products, and suddenly we start to see ads for that exact thing, even on different devices. It's like they're reading our minds, or at least our emails. I know Hillary wouldn't be happy about that. There's also real-time bidding, a process where ad impressions are sold in a lightning-fast auction the moment you visit a web page. Your data is being traded in real time, optimizing the ads you see based on your immediate and past behaviors. It's all happening so fast, Barack. How do people keep up? How do they keep anything private? That's the challenge, Joe. As we move into discussions about the future impact of AI on privacy, we'll see just how these technologies might evolve to further challenge our privacy rights. As we continue our exploration of AI and privacy, it's critical to understand both the transformative potential of this technology and the threats it poses. Recent research from Carnegie Mellon University highlighted these capabilities. The researchers were able to see through walls using Wi-Fi signals to track human movements, underscoring the power of AI to penetrate our private lives without our knowledge. It's like something out of a superhero movie, Obama, but who keeps the superheroes in check? That's a good question, Donald. It's all about balance. In China, they have started using what they call social scoring. This system can dock money straight from your account. If AI-driven traffic cameras catch you jaywalking, it's surveillance taken to another level. Precisely, Joe. This type of system raises significant ethical and privacy concerns. But there are frameworks emerging to manage these risks. The European Union, for example, has been proactive with the General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR, and is now introducing the EU AI Act. Tell them about those rules, Obama. Sounds like a lot of red tape, but I guess some of these AIs need a leash. The EU AI Act categorizes AI systems based on their risk to society from unacceptable risk where certain applications are outright banned to limited risk where systems must be transparent about being AI. This approach aims to safeguard fundamental rights while still fostering innovation. And it's not just Europe. Canada's stepping up with the Consumer Protection Privacy Act, or CPPA. It's one of the strictest privacy acts out there with fines that can go up to 5% of revenue or $25 million, whichever is greater. These regulations represent a global shift towards prioritizing consumer privacy and controlling the spread of invasive AI technologies. They set a standard that might inspire other countries to adopt similar measures. Money talks, Obama. Those fines are no joke. It's a way to make sure companies think twice before playing fast and loose with our data. Indeed, Donald. For those watching, if you're concerned about these issues, engaging with your local representatives can make a difference. In places like Canada, Contacting your MP to express your support for laws like the CPPA can help push these necessary protections forward. It's about taking action, folks. We can shape the future of AI, making sure it works for us, not against us. As we've explored today, the journey of privacy in the digital age is complex, marked by challenges and opportunities. From government surveillance to commercial data collection and the advancing frontiers of AI, each step forward tests the boundaries of our personal freedoms. However, with thoughtful regulation and robust public engagement, we can guide the development of these technologies to ensure they enhance our lives without compromising our values. Let's commit to being informed, involved, and proactive, shaping a future where technology respects and enhances our human rights. Together, we can build a world that cherishes privacy as a cornerstone of freedom and innovation.